All right, good morning. Welcome to the Estuarium. Aquarius Nicole here, and we're gonna be talking about pipefish today. So pipefish are kind of the lesser known cousin of the seahorses and the sea dragons. And it's unfortunate that they're lesser known because they're just as cool. They kind of don't, they don't have the curvy bodies like them, um, but they have very similar mouths. So they've essentially got a long snout. And at the end, they've kind of got almost a trapdoor mouth. And they use that snout kind of like a straw. They suck their food up really rapidly and it's called snicking. Um, and that's the same way that seahorses and sea dragons eat as well. So that's kind of what connects these animals together into the same family. Another similarity is gonna be um, the bony plating on their body. So these guys don't have scales. They're covered in a very hard bony plating. So that makes them very unique as well. Also like seahorses, they have unique reproduction. So these guys, the males actually are the ones that hold the eggs and raise them and then they hatch live from the male's pouches. So all these guys, if you can see the ones with the orange pouches on their bellies, that's actually eggs um, that are developing. So that guy right there, he's got quite a few eggs on him. The, the species, it takes about two weeks for them to um, develop and then uh, the tiny, tiny baby pipefish will hatch out straight out of their bellies. How many babies can they have? So that really varies. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into how many eggs they can carry. I know they've, um, there's been some research on these guys and they've discovered hundreds of eggs on a single male, but it really depends how much food is available. Um, so that they, cause they actually new, um, give nutrients to the eggs, kind of like a mammal would in the placenta. Um, so if they don't have enough food, they can't really take as care of as, take care of as many eggs. Um, and then also if there's a lot of predation around, they might have more eggs so that they have more babies that have a higher chance of surviving. Or if um, they're doing really good in, the, in their environment, they might have fewer eggs, but bigger eggs. So these guys, um, those babies would be more likely to survive. So it really just depends. Have we had pipefish babies born here before? We have. So when we first actually collected these guys, some of them were already pregnant um, and they started hatching out a couple days after we collected them. However, the babies are very, very, very small. Um, so it's very hard to raise them. They don't, there's not a lot of food out there that you can feed them and they kind of disappear. They're very hard to see inside of a tank. We've tried, um, but again, yeah, they're, they're very hard to see and take care of. So looking at them, what's kind of interesting is looking at the number of fins they have. So they actually have one on the very bottom? Yes. Um, so. Most fish you think they've got a tail fin. So these guys still have a little small tail. Seahorses don't have that. Um, then they've got their dorsal fin on the back and that's about it. They don't have um, pelvic fins like most fish have. Um, I know some seahorses and some of these species do have pelvic fins. Um, so on seahorses, those come out right around their gills. They're really close to their head. Um, but a lot of the fins they don't have um, that other fish do. So how well do they see? Is there anything? They can see really well. So they have to hunt really, um, they've got to hunt really hard for their food. Their food is very small. They eat small crustaceans. Um, and each eye actually can move independently. So it's kind of like a chameleon. They can move each eye. Um, and then they zero in on their food. And they kind of have to move quickly and suck it up really quickly. What's a fun fact about these guys that people may not know? Oh, fun facts. Um, so these, these guys, these are Gulf pipe fish and they're really special. They found them all the way um, hundreds of miles inland in lakes and rivers, but you can also find them in the Gulf. So they can handle like really wide ranges of salinity. Um, I know they found them in the Mississippi River. They've even found them in a lake in Texas that doesn't even have any salt water coming in anymore. So it's a completely fresh lake and they're still breeding and reproducing. So eventually we'll probably have different species of pipefish that will um, uh, kind of develop. Aubrey who's 10 asks, how long do they live? These guys don't live very long. Um, on average, this family, seahorses, pipefish, they live about three years. These guys, the Gulf pipefish, there's not a lot of research on how long they live. Most of it says they live about a year, but we've had them six months now and they're doing really well. So my guess is that they might live longer than a year. We'll have to see. 
And when you talk about these guys, so these guys actually came from the environment around. Yes, we collected these. Um, we actually went into Rabbit Creek, which is off the Dog River, um, on the Mobile Bay, and that's where we caught these guys. So, looking at these guys, they they like to hide in grass. Yes, absolutely. So their habitat is going to be depending on the species. These guys around here, obviously, we don't really have a lot of sea grasses, but we have a lot of marsh grasses, um, and there's obviously a lot of vegetation and stuff in the rivers, uh, and they like to kind of hang out in the grasses. So we do have a few that kind of just tuck into the grass and try to blend in and look like a piece of grass themselves. Do they stay in like a family? Um, so they do kind of stay in, uh, I would say it's like kind of a community. Um, it's not like some, um, getting ahead of myself, some species are monogamous and same with seahorses, the male and the female mate and they're kind of like that. They stay that together for life. This species is not like that. Um, females will actually mate with multiple males at a time just to kind of make sure they're getting their genetic material out there. Um, but they stay, they do stay in communities. There's not a lot of travel. So like the ones that are up in the Rabbit Creek aren't really gonna travel down to the ones that are out in the Gulf of Mexico and mate. So they just stay in kind of small communities like that. Cohen, who's five, asks, do other uh, animals eat them? So who are their predators? Yeah, so a variety of animals can eat these guys. They've got to be obviously a little bit larger because they are about five inches long. Um, in the rivers, you might get um, things like catfish that might eat them, but they do hide really well. So like we said, they hide in the vegetation and they blend in really well. They do blend in really well. From a distance, it looks like they're just part of the grass. Mm -hmm. And who is their friend that you have in here with them? Yes, yeah, so we do have a sea pansy in the back there. That is a type of soft coral. Um, it is kind of an interesting animal. It's a community species, so it's a bunch of polyps that live together. The tiny tentacles that you can see coming off the surface, those are their feeder tentacles. They eat really tiny shrimp called brine shrimp. Um, and then they got the, um, and they have the surface polyps. They kind of make up that whole disc there. And then underneath it is actually kind of got a stem, which is kind of how they got the name sea pansy. And they take, you can't really see it right now, and they kind of bury it into sand, and that's how they anchor themselves. But they do move around, they shrink when there's not food around, and they grow large when there is food around, and they start feeding. So they're pretty cool too. So do the pikefish bug the sea pansy at all, or do they habitate pretty well? Nope, they live together pretty well. Some of the pipe actually like to hang out underneath the sea pansy. Um, when the sea pansy is out feeding though, it does have a little bit of sting to eat their food. So sometimes they get a little shock and they kind of avoid the top of the tentacles, but they do like to hang out underneath the sea pansy. Lindsay, who's six, asks, how do the pipefish eat? And you actually have some food with you, don't you? I do. Um, so these guys, they eat uh, a bunch of tiny crustaceans. So one of the main things they eat is amphipods um, and they also eat mycids. So right now I have a few mycids. These mycids that we have are kind of large. Um, so only a few of the pipefish have, are kind of eating these guys right now. Some of them are still just eating amphipods and some of our really picky eaters are still only eating brine shrimp. But we're trying to get them all to eat the mycids because they're enriched and really healthy for them. So the way they eat is they take their little tube snout and they suck in really fast, kind of like a slurp, like a straw. Um, and that's called a snick. So I'll throw some food in, you'll get to see that. And so how often do you feed them, Nicole? So these guys have a very short digestive strap, di oh, digestive, <laughs> digestive track. Um, so they have to eat really often. So you can see the mices are a little big for them, um, but they're really nutritious. So we encourage them to start eating them. Um, Yes, they have to. We feed about three times a day for these guys. Are these guys someone that you would want on your own aquarium, or do you really kind of caution against that? Yeah, so um, this family, the seahorses and the pipefish, are pretty difficult to care for. They are, they can be quite picky eaters. Um, and we really, if you're going to have them in your home aquarium, you'll want to get them from a breeder. Um, that way, they most likely are already trained onto frozen foods and it's just a better way we don't want to be taking too many seahorses from the environment because 
they are endangered. So pipefish are endangered as seahorses are as well? Uh, seahorses are. There's not a lot of information about pipefish. Which is kind of why people probably don't know much about them. Mm -hmm. They're super cool, but yeah. they're just... Yeah, for some reason, uh, the straight pipefish just isn't as cool as the curly uh, seahorse, but we're trying to change that here with these guys. Well, I think they're pretty neat. Yes. And you can come see these guys. When we reopen, we miss everybody so much, um, but we look forward to the time that we can get y'all in here, and until then, we're going to keep sharing as much as we can. Um, Nicole, thank you. Oh, thank you.